hello and in this video I'm going to tell you how to prune a wisteria in order to maximize the blossom and at the same time I'm going to drop in some hints and tips about wisteria maintenance this is my wisteria which I planted about 14 years ago and it's the first of June and we've just enjoyed a really beautiful sunny day in England the first really because we had a very very cold April and a very very wet May so it's lovely to get some sunny weather and because of the cold weather in April it seems to me that all the blossoms are about four weeks behind schedule which is why we're enjoying an incredible display of wisteria blossom at the start of June and it's important that we do enjoy the blossom because sadly it doesn't last very long in about two to three weeks it will all be gone and it will be replaced by lush green growth now before I tell you how to prune a wisteria in order to maximize the blossom I want to talk you through a year in the life of a wisteria because knowing how a wisteria behaves through the seasons will help you to understand the pruning regime and the pruning regime is really very straightforward but before we get started on pruning here is a year in the life of a wisteria a wisteria starts the year in dormancy it's lost all the leaves from the previous year and it just looks like a collection of dead twigs but then come the spring with the warmer weather it starts to develop flowering spurs and it's an unusual plant in the sense that it develops blossom before it develops any leaves and then as you can see at the end of may start of june you get this beautiful display it's almost like a waterfall of beautiful blooms and not only are they beautiful to look at they smell beautiful too and that attracts dozens of insects and bees from the surrounding garden and then sadly the blossom is very short-lived two to three weeks is all you've got to enjoy it and then it's gone and at that point in time the plant starts to produce tendrils and when i say tendrils in this context i don't technically actually mean tendrils because tendrils are those tiny little cotton like things on things like passion flowers but what i mean by tendrils in this video are long stretchy branches that climb out and reach for anything they can grow up and these tendrils reach out and they spiral around and anything they come into contact with they grow round and they get hold of and it grows and grows and grows and each of those tendrils becomes covered in bushy leaves and then we reach autumn and all those leaves fall off and we're back into dormancy so basically i see it as four seasons dormancy followed by blossom followed by tendrils followed by a bushy green period and it's important to know those four seasons because those four seasons determine when we prune the wisteria and we prune a wisteria twice a year and if you maintain that pruning regime year on year you will end up with a beautiful display of blossoms like the one behind me so let's now talk about those two occasions in the year when we prune the wisteria the first one is about a month after the blossom has finished about a month after the blossom has finished it will have produced lots of long tendrils and those tendrils will reach out to find anything they can hold on to and climb up and here's a little hint for you because those tendrils will get everywhere they'll get under your roof tiles they'll get under your roof felt they'll get into your roof space and they will really take off so it's really important at this point in time to prune it to control the size and the scope of the wisteria because if you do let it get out of hand the job of pruning it back becomes 10 times more difficult so here's another little tip for you what i've done with my wisteria to control its size and scope is i've attached it to a series of wires and those wires are attached to vine eyes which I've screwed in to the timber frame of the building and I don't let my wisteria go any further than that matrix of wires and I like to keep a clear space a gap above the wisteria so that I can see that it's not getting in to the roof space so the first occasion in the wisteria year when you prune the wisteria is approximately one month 
after the blossoms have finished when it's produced lots of long tendrils. And you prune each long tendril back to five leaf sets. And what I mean by leaf sets is along each tendril, leaves sprout out, bring it back to approximately five. And by doing that, you will encourage the plant to bush out and prevent it from getting too long and straggly. So that's the first occasion. One month after the blossom has finished, prune it back to five leaf sets. And at the same time, thin it out, remove any dead wood and have a look at the size, the shape and the scope and take any bits that you don't want away. And don't worry and don't get stressed about it because the wisteria is a very forgiving plant and it will be very difficult to do it much real damage. And then after you've done that first prune in the late summer, you can just leave the plant alone to enjoy the summer sun and absorb lots of nutrients into its leaves. And then when we reach late winter or very early spring, it's time for that second prune. And what you need to do is all those tendrils that you prune back to five leaves, now take them back to two buds. And by taking them back to two buds, you will encourage the plant to produce lots of flowering spurs. And it's the flowering spurs that develop into the blossom. Another thing that's interesting and unusual about wisteria blossom is that the blossom starts to open at the top and then cascades all the way down. And you can see when a blossom is nearly finished because those flowers at the very tip have opened. And then it won't be long before that blossom just goes away. Now, as I've already said, I planted my wisteria about 14 years ago and it seemed to take ages to get going, but be patient because it will. I think mine took about four years before it started to show any blossom whatsoever, but you will get there. Be patient and be careful what you wish for because then the wisteria does become a bit of a thug and you've really got to keep it under control. Now, as I sit here, I can smell the fragrance dropping off my wisteria and it's early evening, it's about 7.30 but I know that that wisteria is still being visited by dozens of bugs and bees and other pollinating insects. So it's a real asset to the ecosystem of the garden. It also provides a haven for birds. I've had several birds nesting in this wisteria over the years. You'll also notice birds hopping around in there looking for the bugs that have come for the nectar. So in summary, be patient. You might have to wait a few years for the blossoms, but when it comes, it's worth it. And then it becomes a bit of a thug, so you've got to keep it under control. You prune it twice a year. Once in late summer, when you prune those leafy tendrils back to five leaves. And the second time is in dormancy, which is late winter, early spring, when you prune those same tendrils back to two buds which then produce the flowering spurs. Always keep an eye on the size and shape of your wisteria and thin it out and don't get too stressed because it's a very forgiving plant. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to prune a wisteria. Please do like, subscribe, share, comment below. I'd love to hear from you and hit the notifications bell. I'll see you soon.